Hello, and welcome to CIRCLU's Best Practices in Applying Millimeter Using Windy. Uh, I'm, I'm Tim Murphy, and I'm joined by my colleagues Uri Levy and Shimon, and I can never say his last name correctly, uh, Hockenbohm, but that's my uh, attempt at doing that. Uh, we're going to cover today, we're going to go over um, uh, what Windy is, okay, we're going to do a live demo. And then we're going to do a summary and a QA at the end. This session is going to last about 60 minutes. So first off, what Windy is, it's a cloud-based SaaS or service on software, a service a software as a service platform. There's the beautiful thing about it is there's virtually nothing to load up uh, on your desktop. You don't have to load down programs. One of the questions that I get when training people on Windy is, is that, well, how do, where do I don't down, download the software? There's nothing to download. It works purely off your web browser. It's always up to date and is accessible at any time. It always maintains a, a real uh, of what's going on, of what's happening in our, in our devices, whether there's changes in product or prices. It's, it gives you a real time uh, availability of what's available. Uh, within Cyclo. Uh, it automatically saves. You don't have to do backups. There's no special emails. It's always saving your current level of work. Uh, it integrates with Excel, uh, Camel files, Google Earth, Google Maps. It works really well. It's just spectacular how it works. Uh, and it exports and imports. In fact, the way it's supposed to work is that it is a true interactive between the way Google Earth works and the way Windy works. It's really a nice process. And uh, it really also allows you access that if you need additional help with, uh, with Windy, you can uh, go and uh, you can always ask us for our help in your designs. And we're always here to answer your questions, okay? So here's essentially uh, the, the, way the, the way Windy works as a platform. It, you can directly import a size. You can assist with uh, determining uh, easy line of sights for your, via Google Earth. So it allows you to, to determine the path with actually uh, physically going on site. It can rapidly speed up what the design process is because you can actually, before you actually go, we still always recommend that you go to a site to look at uh, site planning and to look at whether you do have true line of sight. And that's what you want to do there is you, it will speed up that process. So you're looking at the right sites more quickly. It, uh, and you might want to progress the slides. Okay, I thought I was, sorry. I apologize about that. You know what, I may be, let me just do this. Sorry about that, this is user error. Okay, try that. Sorry about that, folks. Perfect. Um, okay, sorry about that. And then you, you want to go through, and you, it's easy input to Google Earth. It's automatic uh, network planning and optimized uh, uh, topology for the product. Uh, it also uh, it creates a uh, looks for uh, potential interferences in with millimeter wave. That's really, really not a big deal. It's more important in multipoint, point to point. It really is not an issue. Uh, but it, we'll look at that because we're entering in a whole new era with multi-point with uh, millimeter wave. And then also does fully automatic bomb creation with fully up-to-date pricing. It really works well. And it gives you a quick way for uh, to roll out a project, especially if you have to get do uh, baseline estimates for a client. Uh, it'll allow you to, to quickly set up uh, a project and give you a, a real solid rough estimation of what a project's gonna cost and rather than investing several days in doing this process, you can do it in a matter of hours. So essentially the de design step is follows. Okay, first off, you wanna choose, and we're gonna walk through this uh, as a live demo. You're first off gonna choose the base on required capacity and distance availability. And you can use the Cyclo Link Budget Calculator. Okay. If you don't know what some of these things are, don't hesitate asking the question at the end, or you can always contact us directly. We can walk you through any of these other elements. But the Link Budget Calculator, then you can import no, uh, notes from Google Earth or an Excel file, or create sites directly in, into Windy. So you got you have three ways to bring in information into the Windy planning tool. Okay. And then you want to define and confirm possible line of sites. In other words, you, you have your points now, 
and you'll go through, we'll go through and we'll actually set up what potential line of sites. And then what we'll do is we, is to go back into Google Earth and you can actually look at those using Google 3D and you can actually evaluate those paths and see if you do have true line of sight. And then the next step is, is you allow Wendy then, once you've established what does have line of sight, you allow Wendy to design and optimize the network and in both point to point and point to multipoint. And then you want to, uh, and then you can evaluate that with reports that'll show you like how many, what's your average hop count from the individual sites. You'll see if you have anything exceeds your maximum hop count. And you can look for what could be potential interference. And then it'll also export a bomb. It'll actually do a full link summary. These are documents that used to take, you know, hours if not days to create. And it, this one is done nearly instantly after you have the design done. And it actually exports a very nice KML file uh, to go back to Google Earth. You can show uh, your clients exactly what kind of network they're looking at for your project. So just a brief word here on, this is uh, our link budget calculator. It'll go through and help you determine what the availability is for that particular area. This is a crucial part of the process is that you want to look at through a link budget calculator and really look at what can a link perform at beyond, you know, beyond interference, before and beyond distance. So you want to get a rough order of magnitude of what a link can perform to. And this is the reason why a link budget calculator, which is a, a separate device, which is, you know, which we've had available for many years now, this helps you determine what your availability is in millimeter wave with Cyclu devices. Okay, let's kind of kick into a live demo here. Okay, and let's, we're gonna switch here to Wendy. And let's see, Okay, here we go. So here's our here are our projects, okay? And these are some of the demo projects we've been working on, but we're gonna go to a demo right here and we're gonna look at a project right now. And this is one we've been working with. Now here's a project we've already, that we've already done. So what we're gonna do is first off, we're gonna kind of clear everything out. So a couple of things for you, for those of you who've used Wendy, uh, you the, keep in mind that if you see something highlighted in green, it means you're actively using it. If you highlight in blue, it means you have access to that. So what we can do, and we've got three ways we can go to and highlight a project. We can use a square. We can use just a polygon or a circle. So this will highlight anything within here, which means we now can delete these off. Okay, and now we start with uh, a site. So it's one of the beautiful things about Wendy is it allows you to quickly uh, start with a, a new canvas, if you will, and allow you to bring stuff in. So the way we can bring items in is either we can do it through a spreadsheet. So we're gonna look at a spreadsheet here. And if you saw that the template's always available right down in here. So here's a template and, and here's the spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet looks like this. Essentially, let me just zoom that in a little bit. So what we have is we have the node name, we have the address, we put in the latitude and longitude, and this is in decimal degrees. You put the height, and the height you can either put in as absolute, which is above sea level, or relative, which is above ground level. You can define whether the, uh, whether the site is a point of presence, a POP, a network uh, access uh, point, or not. And then drop rate. Drop rate is something that's currently not used, but you need to put in a number in here. So you put in a number of 100. Then here you can put in any sort of notes, okay? But the key things are is you need to have your node name. And here's a tip is you need to make sure that every node has an individual name. In other words, you can't just put telecommunications pole, telecommunications pole, or light pole, light pole, light pole. It has to be light pole one, two, three, four, five, okay? Um, address right now, if you put an address, you can put it in, but it's not going to search by address currently. It will in the later version, okay? So that's how you use the Excel spreadsheet. And we can also directly import off an Excel spreadsheet. What we're, we can also directly input points like this. 
we can just put points in. Notice how this is highlighted green. You just drop points into a side like that. But we're not going to use those. We're just going to bring in some points that we've already looked at. So, okay, I'm just going to remove that, clean off our canvas again. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to import nodes. So I'm going to import it. And this is the same way you'd import either an Excel spreadsheet or you would import a, uh, a KML file. But we're going to do a KML file. So we're, we're going to do this. Just upload this file right here. Okay, let me just see what's happening here. Always things. Okay, let me just go back over here and see what's going on. Always happens when you're trying to do things. So we're going to go look at this. We've got some sites in here, and, we'll, and we're going to go, and we're actually going to go this, and we're actually going to take these sites, and we're going to say places as. I'm just going to go this as a KML file. On this little data set two. Right, okay, save. Let me go back to here. And we're going to come over here, try that again. Huh. Let me just, oh, I know what I did wrong. Hit, hit the delete yeah. switch. Yeah, yeah, no, I, no, I already know what I did wrong, okay. So we have to go to, excuse me, site data, sorry. I did links rather than that. So I go here to my places. Go this. This guy, one second. That's what I want. Remove this, so I can save places as, KML. Just go back over to here. Let's bring this back in. Try that. Huh. Actually, we're going to go to plan B here. Tim, please hit refresh on your browser. Hey, re refresh on the browser, okay. No. Okay, there we go. Okay, and let's just go here. Okay, that's, okay, so here are our sites that we brought, but actually that's not the sites I want to say. This. We're just gonna highlight all those. We're gonna delete those off now. Start off with the French canvas. Okay, and then import browse. Okay, there we go. There's our sites finally. Thank you, Shimon, for that helpful hint. Refresh the browser. So this is our points. So these are points that we've got in uh, in Windy that we brought in uh, using Google Earth. So we went in and we looked at heights and whatnot to try to find the 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 right building heights. So we're gonna in the way I did this is that we're gonna go through like this. So we're gonna just get site data only here. So what I did is I went through. And I looked at the sites, and what you can do is you can look at two things. You can you either look at relative to ground level, or you can look at absolute. So that's the elevation. And so what we can do is we can go here, get info, it's properties if you're using a uh, Windows computer, and you look at altitude, and you have two types here. You have either absolute or you have relative to ground. And here we've done is relative to ground. Sometimes it's easier to do absolute. Um, it's just uh, that's above sea level. Okay, and so we went through and we picked all of these points here and went through each one of these and tried to find which points were where where we wanted to set our sites. Now what we want now that we've got points set, now we want to figure out okay so we've got these points 
we want to figure out what kind of network's going to work for these for these nodes. So we're going to pop back over here to this is this the uh, the same design window. Now this is in this regular map view. We can actually go over here to satellite view, and that'll actually show you in satellite view exactly what you're seeing in Google Earth. It's just it works for purposes of demonstration. It works a little bit better if we actually uh, use this in that view because all the sites show up a little bit better and, and it's a little bit clearer to see. So we're going to pop that over to that, that view. And so what we're going to do is that, so we want to determine line of sight. So first off, we need to do um, is to auto connect the sites. Now you can choose how many sites you want to connect. You can choose the threshold. You can do five, you could do two, you could do eight, uh, the more sites you choose, it means the more sites you're going to have to potentially delete. Okay, so we're going to do five. I'm going to run it with five, and it'll depend on your site how big or small and how many associations. So this means each node within the plan is associated to five sites. So we're going to look at this, and we're going to, and I think what we'll do here is now here the way you select it, these as you just go and you highlight it and it turns green. Okay, and that way you know that's the way you're highlighting on your side. Okay, so we're highlighted here, so we're gonna go, and I think this point here is probably one that we wanna look at, so we're gonna add that one. I wanna also add this one here, because that one, looks interesting so we add in when we have more sites that we want to look at we'll add some in here that we probably would also consider here that is beyond the five sites now conversely we know a couple of sites by knowing the the project that we know this one does not work so we can just delete that right off and same thing with this this one right here is that we know this one won't work just because we've been working with the project. So we can do some quick cleanup before we take it back over to Google Earth to look at the line of sites, okay? So we've got this, and we've, now we want to look at what line of sites are going to work, okay, on our plan. So what we're going to do is, so we've gone through, determine line of sites, and now we're going to do an export the KML file, and that's going to export it over. We're just going to open that directly out into Google Earth. And I just had Google Earth. Great. Nor, you know, it's sort of like when the best things, it's, ah, sorry, my Google Earth is restarting. <laughs> oh, the lack of a presenter. It is always so much fun. So as Google Earth restarts, let's go back here and look at what our design looks like. So what we're going to look here with Google Earth once Google Earth restarts is we're going to go through and each one of these paths we're going to evaluate, and we can evaluate in three in three D with Google Earth, and it really makes it uh, an effective way to look at it. So here we go here, and we're just going to pop back over here. We're going to go to export KML file. There. There we go. And now we're looking at our project here in Google Earth. Okay. So what we want to do is a couple of things we want to do is this. Okay. So we want to make sure we're only looking at one project. And keep in mind, this is one thing you want to, a tip here, is you want to make sure that you're only looking at one project at a time, especially when you go through repeats. You want to make sure that you're only looking at the most current and not older, older projects. So here we've got another one open, so we're going to clear that out. Okay, so we're only looking at one project. Now I'm going to open this up. And the default color is a half shade like pink. And what we want to do is just brighten that up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. So we're just going to go to style color. We're going to share our style. I'm just going to go to a more vivid color that shows up just a little bit better. Okay. Then the other thing is I'm going to go over to altitude here. Now, one of the key things that Wendy does is it looks at elevation differences in the path. Now, you could manually edit this with a KML file, but it's time consuming. Wendy does this for you automatically, where, it'll automa where it will look at um, uh, your height of point A and point B and be able to look at that so you can actually see if it does have true line of sight. Typically in Google Earth, when you draw a line, it's just a flat line here. I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to look at this and we're going to zoom in now. 
I'm going to tilt this to a side view. And now we can actually see the altitude differences. And this is one of the cool things Wendy does. You can actually now look at, do the, does that link or will those links, you can figure out which links can work and which links will not work. So for example, I can just, I know that one doesn't work. So we can actually, now here's another tip. You can hit R on Google Earth and that'll take you back to a vertical view just by pressing the R key. So we know that one doesn't work, so we're going to delete it here. And I'm going to go back to Wendy, and I'm going to delete that same, we just look at the same file set here. So see, we're at the same spot, and we're going to delete this one here, because we know that one doesn't work. That one does work, and this one going through the building will not work. We know that one won't work. So we're just going to get rid of some of these sites. We're just going to walk through and we're going to look at that. So we've got those clear and that one, you know, that doesn't work because that goes directly from that side to the other one. Just kind of leave them both so we can kind of keep track of what we're doing. Let's look at these ones up here out of these four coming from this side. We can see that, okay, we just make that rooftop so that one would work. This one is not going to work. We've got, we're just too close and we've got other one, better ones you can do. So we just delete that off. Delete that, and we're just going to go back up here to this point right here, and it's the third one we just deleted. And so we just keep going back and forth between the different formats and look at which points. So let's look at these sites over here. Kind of pull over to here. All these are possibilities. Is this one going to work? Yeah, that actually works. That works. This one will not work. That one's we're being blocked by the tree. So we're just going to go through. I'm just going to delete that. And then come back here in Wendy and do that same path. Right there. That's not going to work. So it's just this interactive process going between the two formats. And it may seem a little bit time consuming, but the thing is, is that doing this in real life, this is infinitely faster. That one's going through the building. We could get rid of that one in there. You can kind of also see, even in map view, that where that is. And if you, if you start, it's a, if it's hard for you to track between map versus satellite, you can always pop over to the satellite, look at the satellite view, and kind of get an orientation there. The problem is you zoom too closely, it will kind of, what Google Earth does is do it at an angle. So it's usually almost always easier and faster to do with just the map view. Okay, so we look at here. This one jumping to sites is gonna be, is not gonna work, we already know that. Let's just double check if I'm being right here. And that one, could it work on both? Yeah, they actually both may work, so we're gonna leave both as an option, okay? This is another one that won't work right there. So we're gonna go back up to here. That one that we're looking at, yep, that one won't work. This one right here. So as we kind of walk through this and we just look through what works and doesn't work, and we just kind of keep looking at the different spots. So all these works off of there, that all works off of there, that works there. This one actually may be marginal because we actually are too steep there, so we're going to go back to this building here. Just go back over here. And we're going to look at this. That's that same link. Delete that. Okay, sorry to bother. Yes. yes, go ahead. Uh, would you please go and explain what you are doing now, but a little bit slower so that people who are trying to follow uh, okay. will understand. So what, so, so what we're doing is, is we're going through and deleting links that have no line of sight. In other words, we can see that this link passes through a building, so therefore we know it will not have sign of line of sight. Same thing with this. We're trying to get a sort of an accurate pro projection of what has line of sight. So when we go do the network design, we can actually know that what we have actually has probable line of sight. And that's what we're doing here. So we're just going back here and we're just deleting also on Google Maps so we can 
just kind of keep track of what we're doing. It's just going back and forth. We'll just do this one up here. See, and that matches up with that one there. And we can know that we run through a building there. These are all the paths that we wanted to check. And what we're doing is we're just getting rid of all the ones that don't look like they have a line of sight. Now we're looking at this. We've got one more. This one right here looks like we're not going to be able to do that one there. So do that. Let's kind of find that over here. It's going to be that one there. Yeah, that's that one there. And just going back and forth and figuring out where your line of sights are and where they're not. Okay, and we've got, oh, a couple, we've got another one right there. That one won't work through that building. There's no way. So we're just going to go right here. And this can also help you when you're actually doing this. You can actually decide that a particular point is not worth doing. And there's another one that's not going to work because it's past through that building there. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. So the idea actually is to determine what links can work in terms of line of sight. And uh, we use Google to identify exactly just. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and there's actually one link that we forgot to put in because, but you know what, that this one pro that we probably, we'll probably put that one back in because I think that one will work. We can probably move it around on the rooftop. And so we're going to put this one back in. We deleted it, but we decided to keep it. So we're going to do this. So that's, we're probably pretty good on what has true line of sight and what doesn't. Now we can go to the next step and keep in mind the Windy Planner does, it shows you enter locations. We now determine where a line of sight is. Now the next thing we want to look at is we want to design and optimize. So here what we're going to do is we're going to look at design. So it's going to look at both point to point and point to multi point. We're just going to hit auto repeat design. And oh, wait, we first have to define that. The one thing you have to do before you do this, you have to define one side as your pop. So we're going to go up here. And this is going to be our pop. And let's go over here. And this is my pop for the side. And keep and notice how I had to have these lit up so I could adjust that. Okay, now I have my pop. I'm going to go back and click on Design Optimize, Auto Repeat Design. Now it's going to go through 20 different possible scenarios, and it's going to look at different costs. It's going to look at different uh, positions of both multi-point and point-to-point -point for the design. Okay, and it's going to and it's looking at two factors: We're looking at cost and limitations. What limitations are is how many hops you are away from the point of presence, the pop. And the other thing it looks at is limitations is that in multi-point it looks at potential interference. So when so when you see when you're farther away from the main point from the pop, and that what potential interference exists. So this is sort of what our diagram looks like, and so we can go through and click on any one of these, and let's look at our right now. We've got two really low limitations, so let's look at that one. So here's our design that came up, and so it has here two point to points coming to a central point. And it has, I guess, back up a little bit. So, and it has one, two, three, four, five uh, multi-points. And this looks like a pretty decent design. Let's, but we can also look at others. And we can also go to reports and we can say, are there any constraints here? So it says, shows the average number of pops away from the, from the pop is 2.6. It has no links that have potential of interference, which is good. But let's look at some others. So we go back to design options. We should go back to show design results. Let's look at something with high levels of limitations. So let's look at this. So this one has high level limitations. And here we could probably see, if we go to reports and look at constraint compliance, now we actually still are pretty good. But the biggest problem with this design is it's a lot of hops away from the pops, from the pop, 4.3. That's the biggest limitation. But we don't have any interference, again, with this design. 
So we can go there. Let's look at another one. Let's look at another high limitation one. See what that one does. See what that one reports. Now here you have a potential where one link could have potential interference. So we're going to look at this one, and we can actually go straight to look at the site where it shows, and that that's the site that could have interference. And we're going to look at that in more detail. And this will show you exactly what site. So here's the site we were looking at, and that's a site that potentially has interference. So it's these two sites we're looking at here that with potential interference with that design. Let's go look at some others. So here's another low limitation one, and this one is a high cost, but let's see what the, that what it's suggesting. Now here it's kind of interesting. It's actually creating two networks. It's actually creating one going off of this and another point-to-point -point link going off of this and creating two separate networks, uh, which creates even uh, uh, higher efficiency, but it's doing it at a greater cost because you have a longer point-to-point. -point. Now, now kind of how we set this up. So let's look at kind of back up here on how we started all of this. And uh, this was assuming that people had already uh, played with Windy or known. So if we go through edit settings, so what we have here is this is what you do when you very first start up a project. You put in the name of the project, and then you put in the type of radios you use. So it's all based right now on distance. So right now in, in this configuration, below 300 meters, we're using multipoint. Uh, from 300 to 600 meters, we're using the 600TX, and a, from 600 to 1200 meters, we're using a 1200 FX with a one foot antenna. And we're not using anything beyond that. So that's what we're doing. We can also add in what the default height is. That's four points that you directly enter into Indy. It doesn't affect points that you import from an Excel spreadsheet or that you are uh, importing from a Google Earth KML or KMZ file. It only affects those points that you directly enter into Wendy. Okay, maximum devices per node, that's how many radios you want on a single point. It's not how many multi-hall radios do you want connected to a base station. That's a separate, there's a separate uh, factor you can uh, enter in for that. But this is, is how many devices do you want on a particular point. Now keep in mind with millimeter waves, specifically on point to point, that number can be outrageously high. Just to give you an example with the 1200 FX that we're using here, we have, eight non-overlapping channels. We have two polarities. And then you can reuse all those same polarities and channels again by just moving the radio six degrees. That means you have 60 possible positions that you could have on a single site with eight frequencies and two polarities. You do the math and that means over 900 radios could be put on a single site with millimeter wave. It's kind of a cool thing. So that's how, how we say we can create or edit a project. The other thing is, is that we can also, if we want to, let's say, save this, but let's say we want to try, we want to save this as, and we can save as, this is demo link two, or three, let's call it. So this will actually save it within Wendy. So it, now you have a, you can mess with this, and you still have this design saved, so you can come back to it at a later time. So we can go through here, and we can go, uh, so we can look at, let's look at other design results. Let's kind of go through here and let's see what different, let's look at a low cost, but let's look at the, another one right here and see what happens here. So that's still just one point. It's got a few more hops. And let's see what constraints we've got off that. So still no interference, few, a fair amount of hops from the uh, point of presence. And we can just go through here and a couple others here. Let's just look at one more. And that's interesting. Okay, again, that's a single point. It looks like only that one design does the dual points. Let's just see if we have constraint compliance. We have two ends here, and this one have potential inference. Let's look at those. So I actually wish to show each one. So it shows you that point. It'll show you a detail. And where potential, keep in mind this is potential interference, not that there is interference, it is possible interference. So right there, let's see where this other one is. So it's between there and those two points. Those are 
are areas where, again, you could have potential interference there that uh, probably, it's a different frequency. It's, uh, yeah, that where Windy is uh, calculating it, where you want to check to see if you have potential interference. So it essentially alerts you to, to issues with the design before you actually do the design. Um, and so, yeah, right here, you can actually get a complete report. It gives you the point-to-point -point info for, and here's our two point-to-point -point links. And it also gives our multi-point info, and it does it per site, and it shows you what every site is, it does. And then you can actually roll that up into, if you just hit this one, it actually exports this into an Excel file, and this puts all the reports on a single document, which allows you to see exactly, yeah, let me expand this up here so we can see what's going on. So we can see exactly all the connected points, all the point-to-point -point info, and all the multi-point info by site for the entire project. Again, this documentation would usually take days to create. Windy does this once the design is set automatically. And then here on export functions, let's just look at those, we can also look at a bomb. So let's look at this. So we can go through and we can review all the items. Now here's a couple things you really want to know. You want to open up this right here. That shows you all the individual sites and shows you what's happening by site. Keep in mind, there can be multiple radios, like in this example here, where we have on site three, which is this site right here. You can always see what site it is. So we actually have two radios on that site. And so and if you want to go to, let's see, look at another site. That's a single radio site. But it'll show you by site what radios, what radios exist on each point. And this is our main tower that we're, our pop that we're feeding off of. So it looks at each possible tower site that you, uh, each, each individual site, and it can go through and show you each radio or radios that are on site. Like for example, if you look at this site, this is site, that's site P12, let's look at that. So P12 is gonna have one, two, three radios on it. And you can also adjust when you go through this is you can also adjust the capacity license for, for the radio. So you can adjust that. And do that. And and there's a Again, uh, so back a little Chrome. Okay, so we're going to go back over here. You log in, and we can come back here to our demo here. So here's your project. Now, if you notice, Windy had saved everything. So even if I had a problem with my browser, like I just experienced, I went through and it has everything right there. There was nothing that had to be resaved. That design was already there and it took care of everything. So we can go back to here and we go through uh, bomb review like we were. So this is bomb review. And we look at The nose list. Again, all the information is saved, and all the information is there. So we look at the tower site. Now the tower site, we can add in, uh, we can add in AS encryption or whatever you want. So any licensing you want. And the nice thing about it is when you add that in, it reflects it when you go to your bomb summary. It reflects all that information and gives you a full pricing bomb. You can also put in your discount level that you have for Ciclu and drop that straight into the project. And it'll actually export it into an Excel spreadsheet file for you. And it works really nicely, okay? Now, the other thing is you can do a link summary. And this is a, on the summary here, I'm just gonna go here. I'm just gonna open the CSV. So the CSV file here opens up and it shows you this is a full documentation of everything that is going on in that link. It is really a powerful document 
again, these are documents that used to take literally uh, hours to create that is done instantly within Wendy. This is just done on a standard uh, uh, CSV file. So it gives you it gives you a full uh, uh, listing of the nodes in um, for both sides of the link. It gives you what the link is in the point-to-point -point links. It'll actually give you your alignment RSSI as well. So it's a really powerful document. And then also we can take this, we can export this design, KML, back over to Google Earth. So back over to the the one we're looking at. Now it does the full overlay of of, of both the uh, point to points. Now we can turn off this. Let's turn off this. This is their old line of sign documents. So this is this shows you our new design right here. So this let's turn off and remember turn off or delete our old stuff. So you're not getting dual. So we're gonna look at this, and now we've got our complete document done with all of our with all of our links. And it gives it a full plan that you can actually show a customer, and it shows it in really, really nice detail what the link looks like. And you can fly around it, you can uh, 3D view it. It makes it for a really nice demo to a uh, customer. You can go through and you can change link colors so you can actually see uh, what it what the uh, what the plans gonna look like, especially when you combine it with 3D, it actually shows you coverage areas in real time and what the network really is going to look like and how it's going to perform. Okay. And now I want to now we've kind of gone through that. So let's just do a quick review. So we we went through uh Wendy over here and we went through uh, the how to save as we went through enter location we went through line of sight, design, report, reports, and then how to export that, uh, the design to uh, Excel uh, spreadsheets with a bomb, or you can uh, do it in a CSV file and a KML file that is fully exportable into Google Earth. Additionally, you can actually set up uh, a user you have uh, observer users, we have three types of users within Windy. We have admin, so you can actually add and change accounts. You have planner users, which are you, you have the ability for people within your firm to add or to, to be added or deleted to Windy as a planner. And then you have unlimited observers. So that means if you actually want to show a client directly into Windy, what the design is going to look like. You can actually have them, they can't change anything, but they can look at the design and that's an observer account. Okay. I just want to kind of open this now up to, uh, to any questions that people might have. And I think that uh, also Shimon wants to do a poll. So here's the questions. Let's look at these. Okay. What value do you drop in Drop rate in the spreadsheet. The value do you use right now a default value of about 100 works, but right now it's just a placeholder. We in the later version of of Windy, uh, what you're going to see is is you're going to see uh, not only distance taken into account because right now everything's based on distance. It'll also take into account throughput, and that's what drop rate is for. Is there a way to at a mobile target that would stay nine degrees in multi -hall. That's a great question. We're actually playing with that thing right now. There's no way to do a mobile target other than in the times I've done it personally, I actually put in a, I'll put in two targets that kind of do the coverage area and that way you can do it. And that's actually, but that's really a cool thing with mobility. Uh, we've done some interesting tests to it. It's, that's cutting edge stuff. That's a great question. Um, thank you, Theodore, on that one. Um, are you saying that these sites don't work for the presentation, or how do you know they won't work? We're, we we um, we look at the sites, uh, uh, and we're trying to determine line of sight because remember, this is a line of sight technology. So when we're going over to Google Earth, and we'll just pop back over to Google Earth. So when we're looking at these, going back down and just looking at our line of sight data, let me just turn off this. So we're looking just at our line of sight data. 
is that what we want determined is, is what links are going to work and what links are not going to work by line of sight data. And that's what we were looking at there. And we were deleting out stuff that what we thought would, would, would work and would not work. And that's what we're trying to determine by looking at those paths. The big advantage to Windy is, is that you can get this angled lines that actually show you proportionally between heights, between the two, between the two points. So you can actually get a really solid idea if line of sight will work. Um, this is something you could manually do in Google Earth by editing a KML file, but that's tedious and it's a lot of work, whereas Windy does it for you automatically. I hope that answers your question, Steve. Um, Steve, again, how do you know that these sites don't work? Again, we're just going on if these sites of blockage is that we eliminated the sites that actually we could see where a building would actually physically be blocking the potential line of sight. Okay. Okay. Okay, appreciate so, so, so basically, uh, the windy here comes to uh, assist with the line of sight uh, uh, validation. Mm -hmm. um, at this version, we're using Google Earth uh, in order to determine if there is line of sight, but any one of you ever try to plan links and evaluate uh, the tens of, uh, the tens of uh, links that you have in such, uh, even in such a small network, mm -hmm. uh, you would really important to have the height correctly so you can easily know if there is line of sight and second as you as you've seen we're not checking all possible uh, line of sight between all the sites uh, we're just uh, checking the ones that we believe that will help us to converge and that actually shortens uh, the time so the windy currently is still you will still need to manually validate the line of sight using google earth but as you can see, you can uh, uh, finish that in uh, in uh, minutes rather than uh, spend uh, so much time on uh, on doing that. Uh, when you, when things will go back to the presentation and we'll see the next uh, releases, you will see that uh, the automatic line of sight validation using public GIS uh, databases is uh, is the next thing to come. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Uh, Theodore asks, nine hundred radios. Does that mean that you synchronize clocks? No, you don't need to use synchronization. This is without. Remember, millimeter wave has no co-channel interference. It is such a cool band to work in because you don't have to use synchronization. All those things that you're used to working with in lower band micro, uh, microwave or uh, sub six doesn't exist in millimeter wave. Millimeter wave is clean. It works. The toughest thing about millimeter wave is alignment. You've got to learn how to do alignment properly. That is the toughest trick with um, millimeter wave. Other than that, you know, multipath, flat fading, scatter, front to back with point to point millimeter wave it doesn't exist. A few other rules, ex rules are a little bit different in multi point, but for the point to point stuff, it's it's an amazing technology. They both are really amazing technologies. Uh, bomb acronym is a bill of materials. Sorry for not, that's actually one of my pet peeves is people aren't saying what acronyms are, it means bill of materials. Thanks for calling me on that. Um, next one, um, what frequency interference study was by Wendy during this analysis? Uh, Eric, do you want to take that one? What frequency interference study was performed by Wendy during analysis? It's actually based on an internal program that we have that we actually use in development of our radios. Uh, would that be an accurate answer, uh, Uri? Yes, exactly. The, um, actually, one of the uh, key things in such uh, designs and, and our uh, networks with hundreds of, uh, of sites, we try to limit it to something that we can uh, easily explain, um, is uh, the RF planning. So you might have an optimal uh, topology, but it will not work because of interference, because of uh, too many, uh, because of too many uh, uh, sites in the same uh, location. So basically, we use um, um, on uh, an engine to calculate uh, the RF uh, interfa interference. Everything is taken into consideration. So actually, when you get uh, those 20 optimized uh, uh, design results. All you have to do is to check uh, or to select the one with obviously the lowest cost and the lowest limitation, confirm that there is no potential interference, okay, and carry out, and, and this way you know that you have an optimized uh, design. Okay, great. And performance perspective. 
Great. Next question. Uh, David asks, uh, he says, could Wendy use other solutions? And right now it only uses our stuff. Uh, we've looked at using potential of using other stuff too, but right now it's just our stuff. So, and that's for, for this rev and for right now, all future revs, we're trying to just make our stuff work right. But it's an outstanding idea for us to look at doing other equipment with it too. Uh, when looking at the sites at the angle, is there a minimum? Sh I'm not sure if I understand this, Steve. What, when looking at sites and the angle, is there a minimum shaded area? The shaded area below is that just done by Google Earth. It's just extending the path to the ground. So what it's looking at is the altitude of what this. So this is a six meter pole, and this is I think about a 23 meter site or actually 27 meters. So that's what you're seeing the difference is. And all this is showing is, is extending that path to ground to get it a better visibility of whether that path will work or not, okay? So that's all the questions we have. So let me kind of pop back over here to the presentation, to the live demo. So future development. We are working on an automated line of sight using uh, public uh, uh, access LIDAR data and uh, it's gonna allow us to, where we're, right now you have to manually go through and check it against Google Earth. This one, you can still use Google Earth to do some planning, but it actually give you a LiDAR data right out of the chute and actually even speed up the process further. Uh, manual design controls, this is huge. This is what I've been asking for. It'll allow you, right now you're kinda, you have to go with whatever Wendy gives you. But this will allow you with the manual controls, allow you to say, well, I need this link here or I need these type of links there. Because in doing design, as we all know, it doesn't always work like the computer says it, it's going to work. We want to sometimes have in our designs, like we want to have a multi-point specifically at this, at this point and a multi-point over here or a point-to-point -point link here. Sometimes we want to have multiple network layers. So that's a big deal and extension of networks. We absolutely plan to do that. So, but the thing is, and I really want to stress that, your input and information will guide us to development of Wendy. We really are trying to make this into a tool that will work for you and make you more efficient and more profitable and create better networks. That's what we're looking for within Wendy to do. Um, just to kind of go over a summary of kind of what we saw here is that this is, you know, as it's an SAS, SAAS system. There's nothing to install. It's always up to date. It makes it so you're not loading a bunch of large software packages on a single side. Plus, it allows us to run Windy, which is, it's a fairly uh, complex algorithm. And so we run it on a really powerful machine. And so all you're seeing is really the results of all that calculation. Uh, it continually saves up backups, allows you to ex export and import data from various sources, uh, and it generates automatic build materials. It's single click. You can either, will do for 20 different designs. Uh, it right now supports a wonderful line of sight validation for links, uh, and it does four millimeter wave, it does full RF planning and validation of potential in, in multipoint, whether you, how many hops you have away or whether you have potential uh, interference with multipoint. And it gives you outstanding network documentation. It really works well. And I think just went through QA. Um, and then, you know, Recording and other presentation we did, and this will be available later uh, as a recorded service. But then some parts I would like to edit out, and uh, uh, and also there will be a satisfaction survey. So and also we're looking for suggestions for future webinars. We would like to hear what your input is, and don't hesitate. It's planner input at uh, plannersupport.com. And um, oh, it looks like we had one more question here. Let me see if I can grab this one. Um, can you input a matrix of line of sites? Yes or no entries between nodes and oct okay. Can you input matrix with line of sites? Yes and no entries between nodes in a mesh and then design and optimize in this tool. Is there no need for manual validation of line of sight uh, if you do it this way? Uh, no, you'd still have to, if I'm understanding your question correctly, you would still have to manually 
uh, look, validate the line of sites. There is no way to, you could give a list of sites that you've already went and manually, like on site, determined that you do have valid line of sight and that way you wouldn't have to go through and validate it. But that means you did on site itself, if I'm understanding your question correctly. Okay. And I think Shimon has a poll that uh, he wants to send out. Shimon? Yes, uh, before we close, we'd like to see if, uh, after what we've seen today, you have a pretty good idea of what Windy can already do. And uh, please take a minute to tell us uh, what you think would be really beneficial if we can add it uh, in the next phases of our development. Just uh, choose the number of answers that are right and uh, hit the submit button. Okay, we'll give it uh, five more seconds. Thank you very much for taking the time. Closing the poll now. And uh, hopefully we can, I can show you the result. So it looks like uh, you know, the most interesting automating the line of sight validations, and then uh, seven place, you know, importing an existing design and continue from there, uh, right next to neck with uh, more manual control over the design, and then two, I mean, two other features are uh, lower important. So thank you very much uh, for all this information. We'll take into account uh, your ideas here and the priorities as we continue to evolve the development of the platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. It's, it's this, this thank you, Shimon. Thank you, guys. It was, uh, it was real. <laughs> and uh, really appreciate your time uh, listening to Wendy. And don't hesitate to ring us back with any questions or email us back or whatever, you know, smoke signals. Uh, whatever you want to do, we want to hear from you, okay? Thank you very much, and this ends the webinar. Thanks.